Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Kevin DeWall, head football coach here at Hobart College. Uh, welcome to the latest installment of HWS All Access. Tonight, I'm excited to talk to Ali Marpet from the class of 2015. Uh, thank you for everyone that's joining us this evening. Ali is the starting left guard for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a veteran of five NFL seasons and a starter from day one. He remains the highest drafted player from Division III, being selected in the second round with a 61st overall pick. I had the good fortune of helping recruit Allie back from uh, high school to Hobart, uh, served at his position coach and offensive coordinator and, and assisted his, his journey from college to the NFL. So uh, obviously I, I'm excited to have this conversation with him tonight. Uh, during his time at Hobart, uh, you know, through his career, Allie and his classmates won nearly 90% of their games, capturing four straight Liberty League championships and making four appearances into the NCAA playoffs. In 2012 and 2014, they advanced to the NCAA quarterfinals, the deepest playoff runs in Hobart history. Uh, as an offensive tackle for the Statesman, uh, Allie has done, pardon me one second. You don't Allie know. Uh, accumulated many awards. He was named four All-American teams a senior year, uh, earning first team honors as the Coaches Association and Division3Football.com. He was a three-time All-League selection, uh, first offensive lineman in our conference to ever be named Offensive Player of the Year in 2014, which was uh, obviously big happenings there. So, um, Ali majored in economics, minored, minored in philosophy and public policy uh, studies while he was at Hobart. Uh, the way this has worked, we've, we, we've received many questions via email prior to this conversation. We're going to start with those, um, kind of have a conversation with Ali, uh, mixing in those questions as they, as they kind of you know, some of the frequently asked questions first and foremost, and then we're going to have a chat feature and then Zoom. So uh, if there are some questions that, that pile in, feel free to shoot those out on chat. We'll try to get to as many as we can uh, based on all of them that were emailed before us. I don't know if we're going to get to all of them. Um, there's some great ones, uh, very specific, some general ones. And, and I think what we'll find tonight is there's going to be a wide audience, you know, from uh, alumni, from families, prospective students. Um, you know, current players, prospects, uh, you know, I think this is going to be a pretty exciting conversation. My goal out of this, uh, you know, was really just, uh, I, I know Allie much further than just being a great football player. And then my goal was for him to be able to, you know, uh, just share some time, you know, during this time where a lot of people are, are sitting at home uh, with their loved ones is just to uh, give everyone an opportunity to get to know Allie a little bit better. And, and my goal is at the end of this conversation, you'll know more than just being a great football player. So um, originally from Hastings on Hudson, New York, I welcome Allie Marpet on HWS All Access. Thanks for joining us, Allie. Thank you for that uh, awesome introduction. Uh, this is, I think is gonna be really fun uh, for me, just being able to communicate somehow with you guys and just being able to engage with alumni that I may not have you know, ever met. So this is a kind of a cool, new way to do this so i'm excited yeah well it's uh we got some great conversations uh there are some questions that i think we're going to lead it uh obviously at any time ali you got some things to add in we want this to be really natural and organic uh, like we had talked um you know i think the the timing is interesting it's right here after the nfl draft so uh there's been some buzz i guess the, like, apparently tampa bay has picked up a couple players you know you might some people might know their names but Let's start out just in general with a draft first, and then we'll get into some of the, uh, the free agent signings. But uh, tell me a little bit about what you thought of the, the weekend with the draft and how Tampa made out. Yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, we drafted an offensive tackle in the first round, uh, 13th overall. Uh, in the second and third round, we picked a safety and a running back. Again, I think uh, we're all very excited here in Tampa because I think the, the recent draft selections address positional needs that we need to win now. So you could see other teams that may pick, uh, you know, the Packers, for instance, pick the quarterback, someone who's not maybe going to help them win now. Uh, and so for us, I feel like we actually addressed uh, needs that are going to help us uh, win this year. And that's really, really, really a goal for us. That's great. Yeah, I was secretly, uh, I gave some fist pumps when things kind of worked out, they were able to grab that lineman to help uh, solidify your front. So uh, have you had a chance to talk to him or not yet? Yep, uh, I did. Uh, I shot him a quick text. Uh, just let him know that we're excited. Obviously, this all season is pretty unique because of COVID. Uh, but again, when, when we have the opportunity to work, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have a rookie uh, in the room, first round pick, and someone who's expected to play at a high level. 
Um, he was number 74 in college, so I made sure to let him know that he will not be 74 in the NFL. <laughs> well played. Uh, respect his peers, and his, uh, that's great. Uh, I love his athleticism. I think he's going to fit in well for you guys there. Um, obviously, leading up to the draft, you guys had a couple uh, free agent signings that were uh, some big happenings. What, what's your take on, obviously, the acquisition of Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski? Obviously, a lot of buzz from their names and their – they're obviously proven players, but just like I thought that was a really good sign for your team saying we're going to try to win right now. No question. So, yeah, for me, uh, I've always been optimistic about our chances to get to the Super Bowl. Like every year you'll, you'll hear that from me, that I think that uh, that's always our goal. Um, I think, however, with these recent additions, I think that brings a new energy and a new approach to the game that I think will actually help our, our locker room and our team and kind of be able to help us all along kind of – raise everybody up, everyone's play. And I think that having someone like Tom Brady to, to learn from, selfishly, just for me, I think I'm, I'm excited to learn from someone who's had so much su sustained success that, like, I mean, that's just what an opportunity. So I'm excited personally. And then also our team, I think that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see it pay off. That's great. And I think the, one of the things I get excited about for you, I know how much winning is important to you. Not that it's end-all, be-all, but, you, I mean, we're going to talk about it, and you heard the accolades there. I mean, you, you graduated as the winningest class in Hobart football history. And uh, we'll talk about your leadership and, and throughout this conversation. Uh, that's the thing that I've always been impressed with, your meticulous detail and preparation for the team success. You know, your individual success came because of the team, and obviously you deserve those. But I think that's the neat thing. And one of the popular questions we get or we, we have been getting the last couple of days leading up to it is, you know, obviously Tom Brady is a, a proven quarterback. Um, obviously, it's going to be a new start for him here, but is that more excitement? Is that more, you know, for guys up front, knowing how important that offensive line play is going to be for him? You know, you had a very talented quarterback in Jameis Winston before. It's a different talent here. You know, what are your thoughts? I guess if you talk to some of the other O-linemen and, and more than just excitement and preparation, what does that mean specifically for you at the O-line position? Yeah, so – um, I, I actually played with Logan Menkins, who is a, uh, a perennial pro bowler in New England. Uh, he, I played with him his last year. He ended down in Tampa, but he played with Brady up in New England for, you know, nine, ten years. Um, and some of his, his advice to me was just like, like, just be a sponge around him. I mean, he really will ha uh, hold everyone to a high standard, especially his offensive line and, uh, um, uh, sorry, I, I don't know if you can see my dad there. Dad, did you? I, I think maybe you got the panelist uh, information. Oh, uh, let me get off. I'm sorry. I'll get. No, those. it's okay. We yeah, love, yeah. love that you graced us with your. Uh, your Thanks presence. for joining us, Mr. Marpet. Great yeah, to see I'm you. just stopping by to say love. I'm, I'm not a panelist. I'm just a fan. No, oh, we, love that, we love that you're here. I mean, if you have any questions, Dad, just shoot them in the chat, and we'll be sure to get to them. <laughs> okay, yeah, but I don't want to be on the panel, so I'll go back. I'll try to get in the audience. Yeah, just mute. Great All to right. have you. <laughs> Thanks. Good to be here. Keep talking, Allie. All right. Um, yeah, so speaking to Brady, I mean, I just get excited. Uh, I think he'll hold every player to a very high uh, standard, and I think that that's something – that kind of leadership is very helpful for, for us. And, again, I think that um, he really will help us all out. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I'm excited and uh, – Looking forward to coming down and hopefully watching you guys play this fall if we can get to that point. And, you know, we're going to come back to a lot of football here towards the tail end of the conversation. But I think that's one of the other really popular questions right now is just, you know, how are you dealing with the changes in everyday life caused by the pandemic and just the uncertainty of the fall? I guess start with the, the now, the, the kind of how has this affected your, your everyday life and then kind of, you know, your thoughts and, and your program's thoughts as you, as you hopefully prepare for a successful fall season. Yeah, so I don't know how much people know about the off-season workout program, but normally we'd be starting up now as volunteer workouts, you know, usually about four to six hours a day, um, half the time working out, half the time in meetings on the field, no pads or anything like that, uh, but just working uh, on our, our plays, working on working with each other, the quarterbacks throwing to the receivers, and we're not able to get that right now, obviously. Um, so we're missing out on that time, which is unfortunate, but we are able to do some virtual meetings and meetings with coaches now. Um, so again, this is the first kind of off season since two, I think it was 2011 when there was a lockout year where players weren't really in the uh, facility during the, this April 
off-season time. So I think you're, it's, it's just going to present new challenges, especially for the rookies. Um, hopefully by the time the actual season rolls around, um, we'll be able to play football. I don't know. I think a lot of things going to have to play out to see what happens there. I think it may affect fan attendance, and I'm hoping that it doesn't affect, you know, us playing on Sundays. Um, but we'll just have to see how it plays out. Yeah, it's uh, we're fielding a lot of the same questions. You know, obviously the NFL is a different entity than the NCAA, but uh, I think just like anyone, they're going to make the decisions that are best for everyone involved. The health and safety is number one and paramount, but I know there's a lot of optimism from our end that we're going to have that season in the fall and we're preparing for our preseason. So I know that your staff and everyone is, and, and I thought the NFL draft was kind of a, for a second there, a good pause with, you know, giving people a little bit of excitement and energy for the upcoming season. I'm sure the same for you as a player. I, I was sitting there watching the draft, like I was in recruiting mode, you know, it was, it was, it was exciting. So. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I think uh, it shows everyone's excitement for sports, especially right now. Um, yeah. So uh, that's great. But also I think it shows the, the ability of the NFL to be able to really sort of navigate uncertainty and and being able to still get what it needs to do done so i think that there's no reason we'll be able to figure it out whether it's we're playing at you know select few stadiums or whatever it is I, I just think that speaks to the fact that the nfl will be able to figure it out and we'll get what we need to do uh done. that's great well i wish you guys well and it was funny setting up for this meeting i felt like watching the the, the nfl coaches and the gms and they were watching the the draft from their homes Yep. You know, I got my computer set up. I got my stations. I don't think my house looks like uh, Kingsbury and a couple of those other coaches, but I, I, I like what we're doing here, you know, so uh, that's great. Well, I want to start a little bit of just a transition and then having a chance, obviously, to recruit and coach. And, and I'm glad that your dad jumped on. I know how important your family is. Uh, that was excellent lead in by your father. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you know, in our, in our program, we talked about it. You know, family is essential in the whole of our football program. And I think that was one of the things that embodied for you. But Tell us a little bit about your family and, and maybe a little bit more how they've influenced you, not just now, but like kind of leading up through, you know, throughout your life. Yeah. So, I mean, I can speak my dad. I don't know if he's still on the call or where he's at, but as you can see, he's, uh, uh, you know, loved being a part of this. I think that, uh, you know, at Hobart, uh, he made it to pretty much every game. I think the only games he might've missed were during his work, which was fashionably the busiest time of the year for him, which he could not get away from. And that's the same thing in the NFL. He makes it to, he goes to the, if I'm in Seattle, he goes to Seattle. If I'm in London, he comes to London. So um, that kind of support has just been so great for me. And that's been, uh, uh, at least I know for him, I think the, the sense of community first at Hobart, right? So I think that anyone that's been to a Hobart football game probably knows that the parents and family uh, are heavily involved and love being around the sport and love being around the games and the post games. And I think that's a really nice thing that Hobart has going for it. And I think that uh, it's a little bit different than the NFL, right? I think that there's not that tight-knit sense of community necessarily with the parents, but I think that that's actually something my dad's prioritizing right now and trying to figure out ways that he can, you know, get families together. Uh, so we're working on that, actually. Um, but uh, the rest of my family has just been incredibly supportive. Uh, again, making it to a bunch of Hobart football games, driving up, you know, watching the game in the snow or the cold uh, to, to coming down to games in, in London, Seattle, which, again, I've been incredibly grateful and, and supported in the fact that a lot of my family was actually down in Tampa before I was drafted down here, mm. my siblings. Uh, so again, it kind of just felt like uh, uh, the perfect match when I got drafted down here. Yeah, that's great. And I can attest uh, seeing your family at all the games and, you know, they, uh, it was awesome to see them carry it on the tradition that we've always had as families and, and loved ones being at the games and, Hopefully that meant if we were playing in snow, that meant those late playoff games, you know, yeah, not the beautiful exactly. sunshine in Geneva, New York. So exactly. uh, that's great. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously now with the, the NFL, we're going to, that's going to be a question we're going to get back to later on, but uh, just transitioning, you know, what about that, that connection, that, that family atmosphere? Obviously we, we try to cultivate that here as a player in our program, obviously having the family and, and loved ones around at the games, but tell me a little bit about how does that in, in terms of the, the locker room, the experience there of, of that family atmosphere. Obviously, uh, you got a lot of different guys coming from a lot of different um, areas of the country, experience, you know, rookies that are just drafted. You know, I know that was something that I'm sure you've tried to cultivate as a leader of that, but maybe touch upon a little bit the family atmosphere from the team itself. 
Yeah, so I think, again, anyone that's been on any team at any level understands just that sense of a shared common goal, right, just to win uh, for us to make it to the Super Bowl. So I think just having that and the fact that uh, we've been fortunate that there's been a, a good group of core guys that since I've been there, have, have been there and been uh, an important part of that locker room. And I think that's kind of rare in the NFL when you get a, a group of core guys. And um, I think we have that in Tampa. And I, I really think that a lot of guys do care for each other. And I can't speak to other NFL locker rooms. And I don't know what those other locker rooms are about. But I will say that in Tampa, um, it's important for players to be around each other. I mean, I, I know at least the offensive line, we're doing dinners during the season once a week. We do our O-line dinners, uh, quarterbacks will join, running backs will join. It's just, it's important, I think, for, for players to do things together. And you have to make it more of an effort, I think, when you're, you're at the professional level. Like in college, it's easy, you know, we'll go to, we'll go to Wegmans together f- from practice, whatever. It's, it's just, it's part of it. Uh, but I think at the NFL, you have to make a little bit more of a, a conscious effort to, to, to make that family atmosphere. Right. So you're not doing your Wednesday big bite night night it's like that we had at Hobart carried over. It's probably the food's a little bit different with uh, with your crib. It's not Wegmans or Marks or Cam's or any of that. It's it's uh, it's a little different, but uh, the camaraderie's still there, and that's that's what it's about. That's great. A team or a family that eats together wins together. You exactly. Know, so that's awesome. Well, keep keep that up. Um, we're going to kind of digress a little bit to back to your your early days in high school, kind of. Coming through, I know um, I know from recruiting you, but you were equally as good as a basketball player kind of leading into football. Talk to me about athleticism. We, we talked about your first round draft choice. He was a you know, state champion wrestler, a really good athlete. I saw him jumping out of the pool. You know, when the scouts came through for you, they were talking about your athleticism. And that was one of the things that I always you know, preached when we're recruiting is we're looking for athletes first. We turn into football players. But Coming in in high school, tell me a little bit about your development as an athlete and, uh, you know, from high school before you even got to college. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I may answer this question just a little bit differently just because I think my advice to all uh, athletes, again, is just become the best athlete, general athlete you, that you can be, right? So I think that often you're seeing now is, is sports specialization, especially at a very young age. And I think that that does a lot of athletes a lot of a big disservice. Um, for me, I, I think I benefited quite a bit from playing soccer when I was young, from playing basketball and football in high school and, and baseball. I mean, it really, I think my advice to high school athletes in general is just play as many sports as you can. Um, I mean, I wanted to do the basketball AAU, play basketball all year round, become the best I possibly could at it. Uh, but really, ultimately, what helped me at uh, basketball and football is playing the other sports. So uh, that's my, that's my advice to most uh, high school athletes and any, any, and honestly, any athlete is just play as many sports as you can. Yeah. Amen to that. I, I, I preach that all the time when I talk to young, you know, young high school players that ask that. And I think a lot of people look at, you know, your success coming from a small school, you know, being the highest ever division three player selected. And, you know, I think the more and more we see it, I just keep telling guys, be an athlete. Our job as coaches is to help, develop you and between our, our coaching staff and our model you know strength and condition everything we're, we're going to develop you there but i would rather take an athlete and teach them the football than the other way around and uh so that's that's great but uh, coming through and and people don't realize you know early on you were being recruited by some division one some division three and maybe talk a little bit about when you started to kind of start thinking about colleges what were some of the things you were looking for in a college and then you know, ultimately, how did Hobart become the right opportunity for you? Yeah, so early on in my college decision process, it, I, I was thinking uh, I was most likely going to be playing football. So I kind of narrowed it down from there to schools that I would uh, be able to play football at. So I, I narrowed it down to that. And then from there, it was, you know, what was the, you know, the better academic school that I can get into, which football team has had success. Uh, shows that they, they care about their athletes, cares about their students. And ultimately, that's how I ended up at Hobart. So I, I was recruited by some other smaller schools in upstate New York. And uh, that's where I was narrowing it down to. And ultimately, at Hobart, um, and to your guys' credit, I mean, the coaches, the, the, the faculty, the staff, everybody genuinely cares about the student athletes um, and students um, and, and just cares about their development. And I, you can, I, I got that sense just 
being up there for the short amount of time that I did for my recruiting visit. Uh, and that was important for me just to get up there and see that and sense that and feel that. And I did. And, and unfortunately for me, uh, I, I had a great experience there. Yeah, it's our good fortune. We, uh, we're glad we, we did well on recruiting you there. But, you know, that I always tell the story about, you know, you were an undersized player, which is ironic at the time. You were, you were an athletic guy. You were on a lot of people's board as a defensive lineman. And uh, I was able to talk Coach Craig into stealing you over to the offensive line. And, and I think that was a pretty good decision for everybody involved. But you know, I think that's the, the neat thing about all these great stories. And, and we had the, so many scouts came through you know, asking and, and talking, you know, what's Allie's story? How, how are you here? And, and I think that's a tribute to your hard work, your dedication. And we'll get into that when we get into the Hobart part of it. But, you know, just, you know, there's a lot of uh, maybe uh, students, high school students on this call that are, you know, thinking that they're at the point where they're almost ready to make their decision, you know, is Hobart the right place or not? Take away the athletic piece. You know, yep. we'll, we'll get into that. But if you were a normal student right now, knowing what you know from experience, what advice would you give to a prospective junior or senior in high school who's just considering colleges? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So I think I'm, I don't know if I necessarily did this when I was uh, in high school, but I, what I'd say to a prospective student is I'd say sort of, if you can, sort of strip away everything that you can and just try and ask yourself, what am I trying to get out of going to, you know, a, a college just in general, right? So like, what do I want out of my experience? Um, and I think if you realize that, well, this is not, if, if I were a high school student, I think if I were to strip away, I think it'd be, you know, what does job placement look like after, after college? What is the overall experience like? Uh, do they have just the, the, the faculty able to uh, meet with me in, a, in an intimate setting because that's important for me. So all those things sort of check the box uh, just from a, the student side of it. And uh, again, I think that that would be my advice. Like, what do you want out of a college experience? Like, what do you want out of going to college in general? Uh, what's your ultimate goal? And I think if your goal, whatever your goal is, uh, I think that you'll find that Hobart checks a lot of boxes and to help prepare prepare for you for the next stage of life. Yeah, well, well said. And it, for any of our recruits on this, I apologize that there's such consistency between the message, but it's, uh, it's been well played and, and we're, we're pretty uh, consistent on what our beliefs are. And, and you said it, you know, the experience, the return on investment, uh, every young man and woman makes their you know, decisions respective to their own family and their wishes, but you know, that's great advice. And, and uh, I'm sure any of the students that are listening, if they can heed that, they'll uh, help them figure out if this is the right place for them or not. But it's a special place for those that come and, and pull back the layers and get the really good chance to see what you know, HWS is all about. Absolutely. Um, so there's uh, kind of tying into that then would be maybe from the athletic side. Uh, we do have some prospects, I'm sure, that are, are uh, joining this call. I know there's a, we had a couple of questions from a couple of our incoming guys. Uh, you know, they've heard the name Alan Marpet. They've heard, you know, obviously the success you had. But um, there'll be some questions that are, if we can get to, I know there were some really good ones that were submitted. But what advice do you have now, in addition to what you said from the student part of it, now from the athletic part, a guy like yourself who literally, like what I said, when the scouts came in, they're like, why is this guy not starting in the SEC or the ACC? Why Hobart for you from, a, you know, I, I, I pull back the layers. I, I don't care D1, D2, D3, but – some people do get caught up in the level, but more importantly, from a student athlete experience, why Hobart for you? Yeah, so I I think kind of fell into it. So like I didn't necessarily know that I was going to get as great of experience as I, I got at Hobart, but I think one thing that's lended itself very well for me uh, after my time at Hobart in the NFL. So in the NFL a difference that I see in myself and some of my teammates who may have gone to those division one, those SEC big schools, I think is just the, um, like as simple as it may sound, something as, as simple as like time management, right? So if I compare that to uh, a, a schedule for a division one player, let's say Florida, any division one school, say Florida state, their whole day is scheduled for them. It's regimented. They have the study hall then, they have the workout and the practice, and every there's even their like what they study, right, can be set for them, which is kind of unfortunate. It actually does a disservice for student athletes at bigger schools. Um, and I really believe that. And I think that the fact that I had to 
sort of rely on, on myself, but also be able to have some resources that help me manage the, the difficulties of being a student athlete at a, 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 a college that takes academics very seriously. I think that's lended itself very well. I think I've been able to prioritize what's important to me because of that. Um, I think that I have um, been able to use the resources that are given to me at the NFL level, right? So I think that uh, if you're used to, you know, someone making you a protein shake after your workout for you, you're used to that. And I think that that element, at least for me, I think that uh, has lended itself very well that I've been able to prioritize what's important to me and use the resources that are available. That's great. And uh, I can, Allie's a very humble person, so I'm going to speak on behalf of Allie. And, and he talked about really prioritizing his time. I mean, there was a commitment, um, took pride in being a great student, took pride in being a great citizen on campus and teammate, and obviously being a, and a great athlete. And that doesn't come easy at a high academic place like Hobart or a lot of the other schools. And, and that was actually, in my opinion, when I was talking to the scouts and, and I think all of our staff would, would speak highly of you with the scouts were saying, why take a chance on Ali Marpet? Well, you've, you've lived that every single day. You've set, you've set high standards. You've had to prioritize at a very high academic place. And it was, it was always actually humorous when they did the Wonderlick test and you crushed that. And, you know, you know, whether you could be any playing any of the five offensive line positions that said he's smart enough, he's going to be able to, to do any of that, you know? And I think, that intellect, uh, I know the scouts and, and GMs and people who are looking to, you know, put together a team at that level. Yes, they want talent. Yes, they want leaders, but they also obviously need some intelligent guys who can mold everything together. So um, well said. And we, we challenge our guys all the time. I know sometimes they feel overwhelmed and, you know, as student athletes, we demand a lot of them, but I always say that that's, they're going to reap the benefits of it after they graduate, when they're in the workforce, when they have a family, you know, I, I'm fortunate right now. I just welcomed my second, you know, child to this world. She's about three weeks old, and she'll be running around here, you know, shortly. The, my uh, almost two-year-old. But time management, when you, when you obviously run a family, run a business, whatever you're doing is is imperative. So that's that's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, it's you kind of touched upon. It. The next question was going to be kind of, can you tell us some experiences or lessons learned at Hobart that have carried over with you, both pers personally and professionally, since graduation? You obviously mentioned the time management, but any other ones that kind of resonate for you? Yeah, I think just uh, with the time management comes, I think just a certain discipline and uh, uh, approach to kind of everything that you do. I think that uh, one of the things that I feel very fortunate about is that at Hobart, I think that I was in an environment that sort of demanded a high level of, uh, of discipline, <laughs> uh, self-discipline. And so I think that that's lended itself very well. I think for me, the fact that I was in an environment that really uh, expect, expected uh, a lot, I think really did help, has helped me. And I think that being with a good group of guys that demanded a lot from themselves uh, always pushed me forward. So it's always about pushing each other. And I think just being in that environment really helped me out. And that's, that's mostly uh, talking about the uh, football team and my teammates there, but yeah. That's great. And you were, uh, you were part of the, the group that obviously, like I said, had a lot of success and, I look at your class, you know, as we were doing some really good things, you, know, you guys held each other to high standards and that kind of helped elevate our program to the point where, uh, you know, we're at a point where we want to continue to elevate it. So we're trying to find our next Ali Marpet and group of guys that are going to continue to raise the bar for us. So um, th this next question, and I look at it, you know, there's, there's many high school players and families that uh, have aspirations of playing professional football. You know, I get that all the time from recruits. You know, and, and a lot of times some, some kids will try to big time us and, and not consider a place like Hobart because they think they got to go D1, you know, and I don't think most realize how challenging those steps are, how competitive it is. And, uh, you know, I think we just saw this past draft, a young man drafted in the fourth round from a Division three school. There was a Division two guy. You know, I think the stigma of the small school is gone. I mean, the, the great thing about scouts and technology is it's very, it's very if, if you're good enough, you do things the right way, they're going to find you. But, you know, I, I, I've seen, you know, we've had a couple other guys who've had opportunities to play in the NFL. I don't think most people realize how hard and how competitive it is. Can, can you just maybe briefly touch upon maybe what were some of the, uh, I guess, let's start first. What was the, when was that point? Was it in high school? When was it in college? When did playing in the NFL 
turn from a dream to more of a, a goal and I'm going to put some, some standards to, to go get this done. Well, yeah, when think, was that moment? Yeah, I think that was towards my junior winter when some scouts came by just to uh, kind of check the box, check out all the schools. So, so but to your point, uh, Division three schools, Division two schools, doesn't matter. Scouts are going to those schools to try and find uh, athletes to play at the next level. So when they did come to Hobart and I tested for them, that was – and it seemed like a realistic possibility. I think that's really the point in which uh, I uh, – the goal seemed attainable. And I think from there, I took all the necessary steps I needed. I mean, I took the summer to train I, and took that very seriously. And then uh, I took my senior year and, uh, with a serious approach as well. And, and again, it worked out. Um, but um, was, there, sorry, was there another part of the question besides when, when was it? No, it was, it was part of the moment. And then I guess the next piece of it would be, you know, what, what were the things looking back? What would you have done differently? What were the things you thought really were the, the points that maybe helped give you a, a better chance to achieve um, what you've achieved? Yeah, so yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I, there's one thing I do want to say, um, and it's unfortunate, but there are just certain parameters that scouts look for that are not really up to me to fall into to play at the next level, right? So, like, there's – unfortunately, if you're a 5'11 tackle, it's not likely that you'll play at the next level. There's just a certain – and I, there, you just need to fit these certain parameters, and that's just how it is, and that's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. So, I did – I was – no no credit to me. I just happened to fit those physical parameters, and then from there, I think that um, I did everything that I could control – to help myself play at the next level. But again, there are certain things that are really out of your control. Um, that's sometimes, you know, you might not be able to play at the next level. But for me, I happen to have those tools. Yeah. And I think we, we talk about all the time, control or controllables. You know, there's certain things that you said there. You know, unfortunately, you could be the, uh, you know, they talk about height, they talk about weight, they're stuck, you know, they measure your hands. They do. There's so many things that are measured and, and calibrated. They're going to look at your your history, they're gonna look at your academics, they're gonna look at your injury history. And, and that's why when I talk to people who are really serious and you know whether they're on our team or just someone I'm talking to as a family or a recruit, um, just go and enjoy college, develop, you know, to, to your credit, like I said, I, you're in, in an elite category in terms of your work ethic, your commitment, you know, you, you took pride in developing your body, sleep was important, your hydration, what you put in your body. Um, that's where some people, if you want to be the best of the best, you got to make decisions 24-7, 365 to reflect that. And unfortunately, some want to do it on Saturdays, but not want to do it the other six days of the year. So, uh, again, a pat on your back. And, and for our young guys that are listening, um, just make sure that you – oh, we got a little surprise guest here. Come on up here. All right. <laughs> Look at this one. He loves the screen. we got a future performer here. So. Is that like that. Okay. Can you say hi to Allie? Yeah. Does she have she's rocking her, her purple statesman gear. She's, she's rocking it. You know, so, um, awesome. But just a testament, like I said to Allie, you, you, I mean, you came in and uh, you, know, you were an undersized offensive lineman. And I'm sure you know, there's a lot of other places that would have thrown you right at D-line. And, and I think you trusted the process. You controlled what you could control. And I actually think what you said it was your junior year. Um, want to say goodbye? I uh, might have another spot shadow. There we go. We'll see you in a little bit. Um, it, it, I, I think of it is the, the year, it was your sophomore year. Your, you, you started a left tackle. I mean, you obviously played a bunch your freshman year, but I thought it was that sophomore year, your growth and maturity. And then some of the, the teams we were playing in the playoffs um, showcased some, some really good senior D linemen. And I think that was that aha moment that as your body was still continuing to develop your skill sets, and you just did a phenomenal job going from that sophomore year. We lost in the Elite Eight game, uh, but you really outplayed that senior who was getting some looks that year. And I think that was in our winter workouts and, and spring workouts. That's where I started to really think that there was an outside chance for you, you know, um, just from seeing how you were developing. And, and to your credit, you just ran with it. You know, from a coaching standpoint, you wanted to get better. You didn't rest on your laurels. You know, so I think hopefully our, our young guys who might be listening right now is just focus what you can control, what you can control. And I know it sounds cliche because I say it all the time, but the eating, the sleeping, the hydration, the finding ways to improve every single day, the, those constant reminders that we have, there's a reason they're there. 
because all of our great players that have, have come before Allie and after Allie, they abided by those and, and they reaped the benefits of it. So um, well, well done on Allie's part. And, and I think it'd be easy to say, hey, Allie, this is how you get to the NFL. There's so many things and so many commitments that you made to allow that opportunity for you. Absolutely. Everyone's got their own path. And I think that everyone's got their own things to work on if they do want to play at the next level. So there really is no secret sauce. I mean, ultimately, I think everyone's got to, uh, if they do want to play at the next level, they, they, level they've got to kind of figure out, they may have to figure out what they need to work on, what strengths they, they have. And, and it's a different process for everybody. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I'm sure that there's a lot of questions that kind of lead into that. We might get to some of those later on, but just kind of transitioning the, the conversation a little bit. Um, in addition to the preparation and time spent as a professional player, which is obviously a year-round commitment for you, maybe, maybe what are some of those things that you do away from the game to help provide balance in your life? Yeah, so um, for me, in the, there's a big chunk of time in the off-season, right, that we have – I mean, you can only work out for so many hours in a day and you have, you know, an afternoon off. And for me, it's about uh, trying to do something different or learn something new. So, I mean, I do uh, quite a bit of reading in my off time and then uh, picked up the ukulele, um, which is uh, a fun thing to do. Um, and again, just trying to do different things, uh, learn a little bit while I can uh, and just try and spend my time a little bit productively, even during these uh, quarantine times. Yeah, and I, and I think that's actually something I respected when you were a player for us at Hobart was, you know, obviously in addition to, you know, I said you were the winningest, you know, your class was the winningest class, but, but you guys weren't defined by that. You guys were involved with other things on campus, uh, quality, you were getting it done in the classroom. Our guys, um, those are some of the best team GPAs we've ever had were those winning programs that we've had and set the standard for. But I liked seeing guys that have passions away from the sport as well, as long as obviously it doesn't, you know, take away from their – progress as a student athlete but um no that's great one of the questions that always leads into is what are you reading as of right now what are the what's the newest books or uh, what's on the reading list yeah most of my stuff's nonfiction, but i am switching it up i decided to read a sci-fi book so i'm reading dune right now uh first sci-fi book okay. that i read so I'm, I'm changing it up but usually it's a uh, something nonfiction, fiction Mal malcolm gladwell type stuff which i find uh, fascinating that's awesome yeah. um my daughter loves the movie Moana, so uh, I might have to pick up the, the uh, ukulele and start playing and singing the uh, the rap song for uh, the rock there. But uh, I actually think I've learned that on ukulele. Uh, you're welcome. Right. So I can, yeah. I can play that for you. <laughs> all right, I might might put you on call here afterwards and see if you can do it. I won't put you on the spot right now. I'll, I'll work the singing and the words. I got that part working on it. But done. Uh, so that's great. Uh, yeah, so and on top of watching a lot of recruiting video and our own self-assessment, uh, the Disney movies have been pretty prevalent the last couple of weeks, so that's, that's always a good yeah. thing. Um, tell me a little bit about, uh, obviously, you talked about your family. Uh, some of your family was already in Tampa before arriving there, but um, away from football, tell us a little bit about life in Tampa, the community, uh, and maybe how you were involved or, or some of the reasons that you like Tampa uh, away from football. Yeah. Um... So Tampa has been great. I mean, I, I don't know, again, I don't know anything else. I don't know what life would be like playing for the Giants or for the Cowboys or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but, um, but again, Tampa is a small enough community where, uh, you know, everybody's able to enjoy it. But I think that uh, um, <laughs> I'll see, I'll see more on it later. <laughs> right. What about community outreach? Um, yeah, I know there's a lot of ways that you, know, you guys give back way more than what we see, uh, but maybe what some of the things that you enjoyed being a part of the, the community in, in ways personally or as a team you give back to the community? Yeah, so I think that something that I'm kind of excited about that I've just done recently is it's one of my teammates, an offensive lineman, Alex Kapla, had a pretty great idea. He um, is linked up he knows an owner of a pizza place down here and he knows that they're struggling to get uh they're not getting the same sort of orders that they have been obviously um so he decided to buy you know uh, a lot of pizza i forget how much exactly and just donate it to a, an organization down here called metropolitan ministries who houses um families that are you know uh struggling and uh 
uh, in between homes and uh, they've got a, a, a large client base that, that lives with them. They help with job placement. Anyway, um, they have people that live with them and uh, Alex Kappa donated a bunch of pizzas there. Uh, I thought it was great. You know, you're helping local business and you're feeding people that uh, are, are down and out right now. And though, so I kind of just took that and ran with it and I copied it. I said, dude, that's great. I'm going to do the same thing. So I did the same thing with a uh, restaurant down here that I know. And then I called five of my teammates. I called Donovan Smith, Je uh, Ryan Jensen, OJ Howard, Devonte David, uh, who else? Cam Bray. I called a bunch of guys and I said, Hey, what if we do this once a week? Uh, I get this week, you get next week and we'll just keep this going. So we, we, we did that. Uh, so last, uh, this week, Donovan Smith's up last week, Jensen was up and got some barbecue for people. So that was great. I, I got some pasta and, and, uh, that's, that's something that we're doing down here right now, which I, I, I love. And then also, uh, something that I'm kind of proud of is the social justice initiative that, uh, was player led, uh, that I'm on the board of that, I, again, tries to do some work for Buccaneers players in the community um, with in this year specific focus on uh, youth empowerment. But again, we've, we've done a lot of things from police relations to uh, juvenile detention centers to uh, really just anything you could probably imagine that falls under the, the umbrella of social justice. Um, and that's something that I'm excited about because it's again, it's player led and, and talking about my time at Hobart, um, I was a philosophy minor. I took a social justice class when I was there that had a pretty large impact on me. Um, and I think that that's kind of the seed that sort of kind of got the social justice initiative uh, working for me. And I think that uh, in that class with Pro Professor Lee, who's now retired, um, it was about uh, playing from a level playing field and uh, fair quality of opportunity. And I think that that's, that's something I, I strive to, to see in the Tampa community. So I'm doing everything I can to, to make that change. That's great. It's uh, just a quick side story. I was down recruiting and every year I come down through Tampa, you're a living legend down there, but they, the, the best thing about it without really knowing my connection yet. And, and I talk about, you know, I had the good opportunity to coach you and they say, well, yeah, I interacted with Allie at this camp, you know, and I know a lot of times you guys give back to the youth in that area. It was just, it's a proud moment on my end, you know, again, away from football, away from all you've accomplished as a student, as an athlete, it was just how you've handled yourself um, personally. And, and I'm sure your family is a huge part of that and they're proud of it as well. But just hearing, you know, that you, you go out of your way to just say hello and, and work with the youth or the coaches talk about, you know, you didn't big time them or anything like that. And it just, you know, I said, that's what Ali is, you know, and that's not the type of guy he is. And, and I just, um, every time I go down, I just, fills me up with a sense of pride, obviously, that you, you continue to do it the whole bar way, the right way, you know, so well done on that part, too. Um, you, you're obviously a leader for the Bucs, you know, your team captain, which is a big honor. You were a two-time captain and a leader all four years while you're here at Hobart, but you're also the team representative for the NFLPA. Um, maybe tell me a little bit about those roles, and, you know, obviously, those are, those are significant for your team, your organization, and maybe how your experiences at Hobart helped prepare for those roles. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I was a captain now for two years. It's player players vote on it. And, uh, I think one of the reasons, uh, players saw me as a leader in our locker room is just because of how important, uh, this game is to me and how seriously I, I handle my business and just how, uh, they can, I think players would just appreciate my approach to the game. Uh, and I think that's one of the, I, again, I think anyone who's played with me or knows me is I'm, I'm the pregame speeches. The, the that, that's not really me. I'm not. I'm not a. I don't get everybody fired up, but I think I have a very methodical approach that I think players can appreciate or uh, respect. So I think that that's one of the reasons. And I think that that was the same same way at Hobart. Um, I'd say as far as the NFLPA, yeah. So I am our union representative for the Bucks. Um, and that was, again, player voted on by the players. And I think for me, uh, that's about having players, you know, best interests in, in mind. Uh, so for me, making decisions on benefits and, and how to vote on, on those kinds of things uh, is really important because I think that not everybody may, you know, pay attention to the details or really look at everything from, you know, every angle. So I, that's what I try and do, try and do my best. Uh, and I think that uh, that's one of the reasons I was voted as a, a union rep as well. Um, I really do have the player's best interest in mind. And I think it's about um, caring for everybody from the practice squad player to your Tom Brady's and, and, and how do you help those guys? That's great. And 
it was similar to ours. We, we obviously had the players vote for our, our leadership. And back in the day, to be a junior captain is really rare in our program, but also speak spoke volumes to your players and your peers seeing the leadership in you. And I think that's – everyone can attest and see the leadership that you developed there. And, and there was no doubt, you know, in talking to the scouts and really trying to make sure that they knew you more than just the video they saw was – they were going to get a leader, someone that and anybody, not just the O-line group, not just the quarterback, everybody from a defensive back to a, a D lineman to a wide receiver, someone they could understand that you would be someone you that they could trust and that you would have their best intentions in mind. So we're proud of that leadership. Keep it rolling. And uh, you know, I'm excited, like I said, to see uh, you know, the NFL needs as many leaders like yourself you know, as they forge through these tough times and continue to make sure that the, the league is putting the best – people in the best um, you know, representation for. So congrats on that. Uh, maybe one of the questions looking back on it, you know, hindsight's always 2020. What were the opportunities maybe you wish you were involved more at HWS or more involved or some things that you would have done differently now having the experience after graduation? Yeah. So I think I personally, so I mean, to be honest, I mean, it's a tough question, but I honestly uh, saw my peers have much more involvement with the local community there than I did. Uh, and I think that seeds were planted just seeing, you know, some of my teammates go out in the community and do such great things. Um, and also again, taking these philosophy class, some classes that really helped me think about social, social justice seriously. Um, and again, I don't think I really took advantage as much as I could have when I was there. I think that I, I get a, a, you know, uh, I get a lot out of it when I do help out in the community here down in Tampa. And I kind of wish I did more of that uh, in, in Geneva. Uh, but again, I think that even though I didn't, it still really planted the seeds. So I think that the fact that I'm able to help down now and have a platform to do so and hopefully make a, a larger impact, I think is, is really great. But again, I think when I was at Hobart, it's, I mean, I'd had the time to, I just, I just didn't prioritize it as much as I did my academics and athletics. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great advice, and I think it's a balance, like you talked about earlier, is just trying to – you had your hands full, and, and I think a lot of our guys do take a lot of ownership and, and giving back to the community, and, and not just the local Geneva community, but even their communities at home. So, um, and, and you were involved in that, and I think that's one of the things we always uh, – I see our guys when they're involved, whether it's through Happiness House or reading to elementary schools or giving back to the local soup kitchen, you know, I feel like sometimes our guys get more reward out of it than, than those that were they're influencing. But uh, no, that's great, and uh, you're always welcome back. I know you're able to – with your schedule, it's tough to come back, and, and unfortunately we had to adjust the uh, reunion this, this year. But uh, we'll, we'll make sure we get you back when it works with your schedule. But you were able to come back um, last – not this past season, but the season prior. It happened to be one of your bye weeks. And I thought it was really interesting we had you speak to the team, and, and you brought in some really – really good insight of maybe some of the differences between college ball and uh, the NFL, the professional ball. And um, maybe touch upon one or two things. Sometimes our guys, we push them pretty hard. You know, we, we challenge them. Um, but I, I always say like, they're going to appreciate it more when they, when they graduate and, and they no longer have the ability to be in part of the ultimate team sport of the football is, but maybe what are some of those differences between college ball and, and NFL and, and professional ball? And, and maybe some of the things just to, reiterate with our guys to enjoy the time that they have right now. Yeah. So as far as the, uh, you, I think holding players to high standard, which is what you should do um, is I'd say that my experience in the NFL locker room is you can see the players that uh, were expect, there was a high expectation for versus the players that may have, uh, have, had a little bit more help in the process, maybe not held to as such, such high expectations. So as soon as they, they're on their own, I think they struggle tremendously uh, at the NFL when you don't have someone to, to keep you accountable. So I think the fact that you did keep us so accountable, and again, that, that's, that's on us. I think that's lent itself well to the, uh, N, uh, to the NFL uh, locker room. And then again, I think just some differences between the locker room and the NFL and the colleges I think when you, when you, a college locker room is about as close as you, a, guy, a good group of guys can be. I think that uh, in my time there, I think that uh, uh, you know you're, there's not a whole lot of ego involved, and there's there's a lot more uh, shared goals. 
um, which is a little bit different in a locker room than the NFL where you may have your own individual goals. So again, I think that there, there are differences and I think that the college experience is so unique and uh, I was so fortunate to be able to experience it uh, and uh, it, it just is different. That's great advice. And, uh, you know, I think looking back, one of the things I got my, my daughter here playing with some window stickers. So if you're hearing a little murmur, that's, that's what we got going on right now here. But um, you were in part of some, some significant wins, you know, some dramatic wins in Hobart history. You know, I think the, you know, just the 2014, the wins in the playoffs, the uh, Ithaca comeback, the, the Johns Hopkins wins. Um, what were maybe some of your favorite memories from a Hobart football playing career standpoint? Any games or any experiences that jump out more than others? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we've had a bunch of playoff runs since I've been there that have been just so much fun to be a good part of. <laughs> and I think that for me, uh, there was, I mean, unfortunately, it ended up in a loss, but again, taking on a, uh, taking a plane on the playoffs uh, and just honestly, the, I think just the road trips, I think with, some of uh, all those games I mean I think you become so close over when you're you know on a bus for <laughs> as long as you are and I think that uh you know I'm grateful for that and um yeah a lot of team bonding that's for sure right a lot of team bonding which is great I think it you know it's something that I think a lot of guys miss I think when guys finish up their their time uh I mean, when any student athlete finishes up their time at HWS, I think that they absolutely miss the some of the struggles or some of the stuff that may not be so pleasant at the time, but uh, really do miss when they're done. Well, you guys, uh, like I said, you've definitely paved the way for our uh, our current guys and obviously future success. And uh, we're gonna we're aspiring to get back and beyond. So we're hoping to break. Uh, we're trying to recruit our next class. It's gonna have a more successful four year career than your guys if we can. Yeah. So. Um, I guess uh, just transitioning now, maybe what was the, is there one game or an experience in your pro career that kind of really just resonates as maybe most exciting or kind of up there? Yeah, I mean, so there are, I mean, there are a couple different experiences I can think of that have been pretty impactful. I mean, for me, I was a Giants fan growing up. So being able to play uh, up, up in New York, was, uh, New Jersey, was great for me. Uh, I had a, a lot of a lot of friends and family that came out to see me play, but that was kind of a surreal experience, just being able to, uh, play up there and then uh, again when when you get the opportunity to play against guys that you watch playing so for me uh, being able to play with Tom Brady I'm sure I'm excited to be able to get to do that I think uh, for me playing a playing a guy I was watching it's funny I was watching a uh, uh, the, since they're playing old sports highlights on ESPN they're watching it's a game from 05 it was like a Monday night football game Colts and Pats and I was watching Logan Mankins a guard I played with I played for the Pats he was young. I uh, watched Vince Wilfork, who I played against. He was in, at the Texans when I played him, but he, when he was in New England. And then Brady, and it's just it's just so cool because I used to play Madden 05. I used to, like, that was – so for me to be able to play with guys that you watch play growing up, I think is really just always – it's hard not to get excited about that. Yeah, that's awesome. There's uh, – I want to take a second here. We got some, some great questions coming through, so I'm trying to just prioritize it and, and obviously be conscious of time here. But um, maybe take a quick drink of water, Allie, while I go through these. So you can take a quick sip. Always hydrating. We're telling our guys, make sure you're hydrating. Um, you've, you've touched upon some of them, especially with the, you know, the, the community outreach and, and the program. But, um, you know, a lot of them are coming through just saying, you know, obviously they're proud of, you know, what you've meant to the school and to Hobart football, and I obviously can resonate that. But – uh, maybe just touch upon, um, you know, any initiatives moving forward, things you want to do for some of the, the local community, the, the disadvantaged kids, the families, anything in the future that you see yourself wanting to get into? You talked about, uh, obviously, some of the things right now. But once we get, hopefully, through this pandemic and, and solidified, uh, hopefully, in, back to a new normal, what, maybe what some things do you have and, and plan ahead? No question. So, I mean, I think that at least a theme for – uh, uh, our social justice initiative this year is we're going to be working on youth empowerment. So that's going to cover a lot of things, but that, that can uh, be anywhere from going to, uh, you know, juvenile detention center, talking and giving inspiring mes messages uh, and just giving them some hope uh, to, you know, again, just playing football with, you know, high school students and, and, and middle school students at schools. But again, I think that for me, I think COVID after COVID, it's going to present a whole new, challenges 
and I think that uh, hopefully the box and players will be able to take these challenges and, and, and make the biggest impact that we can. And uh, so I don't necessarily know what, you know, I, I just know that there will be new challenges after COVID. So I don't, you know, it, it disproportionately affects certain groups of people. And I think that, um, I think that we'll be able to uh, uh, hopefully help out in the best way that we can. Uh, and I don't know what that looks like yet, but I, I'm going to do the research. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to talk to people that know how, the, how to make the biggest impact. And then we'll just go from there. That's fantastic. And uh, you guys will do a great thing. So keep that up. Uh, one of the questions here is, as you, grow old, as you grew older in your career at Hobart and became more respected and eventually a captain, how did you transition into more of a leader to motivate your teammates uh, consistently? Yeah, I'd say that it's, it was always important for me to stay authentic uh, to what I'm about and to who I am. And I think that naturally, I think in my experience, people have, tend to respect and appreciate that. And for me, uh, being authentic for me was just focusing on how I can be the best athlete, how I can challenge my teammates to become best athletes. Uh, not maybe not just not not just a, a, a firecracker inspirational guy, but again, just ways that I can uh, you know challenge someone and pull guys along by holding myself to a very high standard. Um, and I think that uh, that's that's been authentic to me. So I think for uh, someone else, it may be something different. But really, uh, I mean, it's being I think authentic uh, uh, to yourself and to what's gotten you to wherever you're at and. Um, just hopefully people can respect that. That's great. Great advice. And it, we, a really popular question coming in. It must be we have a lot of our incoming first years on here. But uh, any advice from your freshman year? If you could go back, talk to Ali Marpet when he was coming in as a young freshman and now wise with wisdom, anything in particular for the young guys? Uh, student athletes or just students in general? Uh, these are coming from a first year experience. So let's maybe talk about the student part first and then maybe for the incoming first year players. Yeah, gosh. I mean, uh, my freshman year is kind of whirlwind love for my first <laughs> uh, time at, at Durfee. I mean, it's just <laughs> seems like a little while ago. But yeah, no, I think that um, uh, from a student uh, standpoint, I, I had the opportunity to uh, study things that I was genuinely interested in. So I, I take that pretty seriously if you can. I think that uh, your course selection and things, like you have an opportunity when, when you're at Hobart to really learn from really smart people in a wide variety of different fields. So again, I was able to try and learn. I, I knew I was going to study economics, but I didn't know I was going to study philosophy. I took an intro to philosophy class and just it just uh, I was uh, gravitated towards it. I think that uh, for incoming freshmen, I think just, I guess, remain open uh, and, and you'll be able to learn from really smart people uh, from student athlete. I think that I was, uh, I was fortunate that I had coached a wall as a coach. And uh, I think the more someone buys into a coach who has, who really is, uh, a great coach, I think that will pay dividends. So I think if you really buy into what coaches at Hobart, HWS in general have to say to you, I think that you'll be able to see those sort of benefits. And I think that uh, that would be my advice for most freshmen. Like right now, just look, soak, soak it in, soak it in from people that are, frankly have more experience than you uh, and, and learn and learn from them. So that would be my advice. Very well said. And, uh, uh, all of our young guys, make sure you heed that advice. Listen to our staff. We're going to lead you in the right direction. So um, best places to go on campus and in, in uh, Geneva community. So uh, pretty, pretty broad, open question. But where were your, you know, kind of places where you needed to get away from either people studying? Where were your, where were your hot spots? Oh, so for study, studying, I'm a big library guy. I needed, an, I honestly needed an individual booth or I wouldn't get anything done. But second floor library, Easy, easy peasy. Um, as far as, uh, and I, I did need to go there quite a bit. Because <laughs> I'm someone who needs to separate my work. Like, I, I just need to be in a different space. That I can't focus if I'm, you know, in a space where I watch Netflix or something. Anyway, sure. um, <laughs> as far as favorite places, I, my, my experience at Hobart has, I think, a lot to do with food, probably. Because <laughs> that was a big part of my experience there. And I think Wegmans uh really held it down for me i think the wegman subs held it down that was a regular thing uh for me and some of my you know, teammates there um 
uh, Eddie O'Brien's after football <laughs> games. Uh, that was always a, a fun experience with the friends and families. Um, that was awesome. Uh, there's so many great, like, honestly, my, my stuff's all food. Ports, Halsey's, there's so many great restaurants there that, like, I still want to go back to and, and miss. Um, there's uh, probably a reason why we were such on the same page. Food is very, very important to both of us, near and dear to our hearts. And, uh, no, you're right. There are so many great places to eat on campus, off campus. But um, I, you, I know you have really good taste because when I come down to Tampa, you always lead me into, you know, some really good places there. So, we got a lot of places. There's some new ones that have popped up in Geneva. So when you come back, we'll always uh, make sure we find some, some good eating places for you. But uh, good advice. And uh, you know, we do the mandatory study halls, but I think it's important guys find their right, their, what works for them. Some guys can study in the room. Some guys can find that place on campus. Some guys can study around people with the headphones on and music going. Some people need that, that quiet space. So find what works for you and, and, uh, and find that place. I knew my, I had a very quiet place over in the science buildings that I could Basically, I wouldn't, wouldn't tell all my friends, so they didn't know where I was going to be, where I know I could get some work done. But uh, uh, that's great. As someone who obviously talks about food, and I took, I look at you, are a skinny young guy coming in with a good frame, developed the right way, put on the, the, the right, correct weight, got more explosive with it. I know right now uh, that uh, nutrition is huge for you, not just during the season, um, but uh, outside as, as you're looking to maintain your body. And I think, I don't know if people really – understand or respect what your body goes through for a normal season and how recovery is important. So we, we touch upon that. We talk about nutrition, sleep, recovery, maybe talk about in season versus the recovery and what you do training year round, you know, that maybe someone, the average person might not know that you, is, is important to you from an eating and recovery standpoint. Yeah. So there's a, a lot to touch on here, but okay. Yeah generally eating needs to be taken very seriously if you're going to be a professional a college athlete or if you're a professional athlete whatever in general it needs to be taken seriously you need to be aware of what you put in your body and for me um I've, I've i'm fortunate enough now where i can get uh some healthy meals delivered i'm not much of a cook like i know that about myself so i can get some healthy meals delivered to the house um and i think that uh eating is it, when, when for me when i was trying to put on weight uh is I was very intentional about it, right? So a lot of people say, you know, I can't put on weight, I can't put on weight. I tell them, like, if you were to sit down with me, I can, we can put weight on you. Like, I just need to be smart about it, um, intentional, and you can get it done. Or if you need to lose weight, you just, it's, it's possible. Like, the, the, there's information on there how to do it. You just got to be able to execute it. Um, as far as recovery, your body in season takes such a beating, especially, so the, need, the needs that I have as an offensive lineman are totally different than a receiver, right? So um, a receiver's recovery is going to look much different than mine. Mine is about more about uh, my joints and, you know, getting in the cold tub and, and making sure I can reduce inflammation. A receiver is more, uh, you know, central nervous system, their muscles being taxed, uh, and their, their recovery is going to look very different than mine. But either way, I think it's important to take recovery very seriously. And I'm fortunate that I have resources now, sports scientists, nutritionists, uh, physical therapists, people that I can ask on what things I need to do to get my body ready to play, whether it's massages or cold tubs, hot tubs, whatever, uh, one, running in the underwater treadmill. There's a whole lot of resources that I have now available to me uh, that can help me turn around on game day. And then in the off season, um, it's just about getting to a new normal if I can. That's fantastic. And uh, th there's a tribute to you, obviously, not only seeing you firsthand, I, I get all the time guys say they can't gain weight. And I hate the word can't. We don't use that vocabulary at all. There's some more that are challenges based on their, their natural body and all that. But as a guy who had to put on a lot of weight or tried to gain weight when I was a student athlete and seeing you, like you said, the word intentional, you made a commitment and from setting in alarms and making sure you didn't miss meals. And, you know, there's a greater commitment there, but uh, I, I really think that those who are fortunate to have a long professional experience, a huge part of that obviously is a little bit of, of luck with their health, but also taking care of their bodies. And I think that's a tribute to you and kind of leads into hopefully a question that, you know, we're not putting you on the spot, but just thinking ahead, but you know, how long people always ask how long of an NFL career, you know, maybe what aspirations might you have after football? Not hurrying it, and we want you to stay there when as long <laughs> as you want. But have you thought, or and don't again? I don't want to put you on the spot here, but have you thought more about how long? What's the right NFL experience and, and things to do after football? 
Yeah, I really think it's uh, so it's, it's, it becomes a year to year, you know, approach for me. I think uh, I'm, without a doubt, I, I know I'm playing next year and the year after that. And I just I'll take it year by year. But uh, ultimately, it doesn't mean you don't prepare yourself for life after football, because sometimes it's not really up to you. Um, in an ideal world, you know, you can walk away whenever you want and I can, and, and, uh, uh, call it a day. But I think something, sometimes the, the, the team says you kind of get it, got to get out of the building. It happens to hall of famers, it happens to everybody. So, uh, it, it's important for me to prepare in the off seasons for a career after football. And what that looks like for me is, uh, right now, as my interests are, is, is looking, um, talking to people that are in the financial advising world. I think that something that speaks uh, to me is uh, being able to have those conversations with my teammates to make sure that they're uh, educated as best they can be uh, on their finances. Because every player works so incredibly hard. You know the work that it takes to get to the next level. And uh, they need to be, I, I want, I love when players are able to save the money that they've deservedly earned and uh, make that money work for them. And I, it's, it's a shame when you see people take advantage of, of someone who's worked so hard or, uh, you know, just making something, uh, making decisions that just are ill-informed. So I think that that's something that I'm working on right now is just getting a good grasp of how I can help, help my teammates. Well, you're definitely uh, using that Hobart education and we're, we're proud of you. So um, I think it's about that time. I know there's a ton of questions. We would love to keep going and maybe uh, down the road we can revisit this. But uh, I think, uh, again, just because of the wide variety of everyone that joined us, we tried to hit a bunch of different areas and topics. Um, but you've done a great job and we appreciate you taking the time here to join us. Uh, on behalf of us and the Hobart football program and, and the Hobart College, we're really proud of you as an alum, um, not just because of what you're doing on the field, more importantly of who you are, who you remain to be off the field as a leader, uh, obviously the person you are. And uh, so keep that up. Know that uh, we got a lot of people cheering you on and uh, I'm looking forward to when the time's right, getting down to Tampa and, and watching you get into some action there. So um, we had a couple uh, conversations or a couple of questions come in from this guy named Tom Brady. I said, we'll have to get to his questions later <laughs> on, but uh now, we, we appreciate your time, Allie. Um, again, on behalf of the colleges, uh, thanks for everyone joining us um, and uh, wishing everyone to stay healthy during these, these uh, uncertain times. Okay? Thanks to all. Thanks, Allie. Thank you. Uh, Coach? Yes. If I'm just mad real quick. I, yeah, please do. Yeah. Shout I, out to anything else. No, I just feel very grateful and appreciative for the support that I feel from the uh, Hobart and Willing Smith community. I really do. Um, I think that that stayed with me. I think that's unique. I don't think uh, necessarily all NFL players have that support from their, their alma maters. But again, I, I really feel that's more support from the community uh, up there. And I really do appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I look forward to coming back up. You're always, like I said, you're always welcome to come back. I got some Hobart gear coming your way, you know, when the next order comes through. And, uh, and again, we, uh, in addition to the great stuff you're doing on the football field, keep, the, keep doing the, the right thing off the way. Keep leading the Hobart way, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely stay in touch. And I'm going to be shooting you a message after we get off this call about that ukulele, and we might have to be putting my daughter to sleep. We might be doing a little one-two combo, okay? That's good. All right. Again, thanks to everyone involved uh, for joining us in the call tonight, and uh, we appreciate all the questions and those we couldn't get to. Um, we'll either try to figure out a way to, to answer those that we can, and um, obviously everyone continue to be safe, and thanks for your time. Have a good night.